Tonight we have a fairly small board of appeals. We have, we're down to three, Jim, Jim and I, and Greg. So the to get the majority that, that was required, we'll have two people agreeing on uh, any motions that we put together. Uh, first of all, let's handle the uh, housekeeping. Did anyone go out to see any of the properties that we have before us tonight? No. No. And I did not either. So none of the three of us have done that. Uh, do any of you expect to need to recuse yourself from voting on any of the issues tonight? No. No. Okay. And have you spoken with anyone regarding the variance requests before us tonight? No. No. All right. A motion would be in order regarding the agenda. Have every, everybody's had a look at it? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. I second the motion. All righty. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We've got the agenda approved. Uh, regarding the minutes from the last meeting, a, uh, a motion would be in order. I'll make a motion of the minutes from the last meeting. I'll second it. Very good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, very good. We've, we have approved the minutes from the last meeting. At this point, uh, since Tommy isn't here to remind us, we should uh, have a motion to open the floor for further discussion. Make a motion to open the floor. I second. Very good, all in favor? Aye. 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 Floor is open for discussion. I believe we're ready to get into the business at hand for tonight. Regarding item number one, Paul, do you want to lead us through what uh, we have before us? Sure, I'd be happy to. Thanks. Um, this variance request is for the new Purveyor Clinic, uh, Rosa 1860 uh, Shano Avenue. Um, can everyone hear me? Yes. 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 Good, just wanna make sure. Um, the property is on the northeast corner of Taylor and Shano. Uh, obviously this is an older aerial photo. Uh, the zoning of the property, the plan unit development, and that, that really kind of encompasses the entire campus as well as signage requirements. However, this portion of the PUD refers back to um, the commercial standards or the underlying zoning on this particular property. So those requirements were not included in the PUD and the property owner or the applicants chosen to seek a variance uh, for the signage. So the issue that is before you is, uh, again, this is the site plan of the property. You can kind of see the footprint of the building up here. Uh, this is Taylor and Shano uh, parking area. Uh, proposed signs at the uh, Shano Avenue uh, entrance and exit as well as along Taylor Street. Um, the commercial code requirements limit uh, monument signs to six feet in overall height. Uh, their proposal is to go to nine feet in overall height. So a difference here. So that's the reason why staff could not approve the request as proposed and the applicant uh, made the request for variance. Okay, does the applicant uh, wish to speak regarding the uh, variance request and the hardships that it imposes? Yeah, thanks, thanks Don, board. Um, I mean, uh, just a handful of comments to, to add to Paul's description. Thanks, Paul. I, I mean, uh, the sign box itself sitting on top of a masonry base as proposed is, is specifically only five and a half by 11. And I, and I appreciate that um, we could certainly build up a berm to keep that height, uh, height in place, which I think is kind of important to the scale of the building. It's an 80,000 square foot building, as it were. Um, um, but that said, you know, we're using the same natural stone on big portions of the building. It's a bit of a brand standard for, for Purveya Health across the whole state. I and mean, that includes the same monument sign in, in 
Sheboygan and Shawano and Menominee and Altoona and, and some quarter million square feet worth of clinic space across the state of Wisconsin. Um, I mean, I certainly appreciate the, the um, zoning codes efforts on, on keeping our community beautiful and keeping the nearby residential neighborhood protected. Um, I don't, I don't think this pushes it too far. I do think it's a little more in keeping with the scale of the building itself at four stories plus a penthouse. It's just coming in under 70 feet tall worth of building. Uh, and this is a little bit more presence than just, than just a six foot height overall. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's about it. Uh, there's not too much to speak of. I mean, I don't think it's overly verbose for, for, um, the site that it's planning on, like, like Paul had mentioned, one would face the roundabout on Shawano kind of between where there's a pretty hefty collection of berm on, um, more approaching fleet farms entry sequence and the other indicating where the entry for the driveway itself would be past the division over in the Shawano Avenue. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Alderman Steyer, would you care to comment? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I had a chance to talk with Mr. Shrubis this afternoon and I with some of the neighbors as well. And it's probably no secret that, you know, this has been a an interesting project. Um, you know, I, I represent the citizens as well on Gary Lane. Um, you know, I, I you know, I'm just going to state quickly that, you know, this neighborhood has gone through a lot. You got Fleet Farm across the street, you got Quick Trip, and you got now you got this clinic coming in. So there is a bit of strain on the neighborhood, but I, I do give credit to um, Mr. Strubis and Prevea for uh, having the neighborhood meetings and talking with, with the neighbors and doing a nice job of that. Um, but with that being said, I, I guess my question would be maybe not just to Mr. Shrubis, but also Paul Neumeyer. Uh, our code calls for a six foot uh, sign and they're asking for nine. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. So I, I realize, you know, the building, you know, I was told, you know, the neighbors had mentioned that the building was going to be four stories, but now it's four stories in a penthouse. I know it, it was in a site plan, but like I said, they're very sensitive to some of the things that have happened over time. And I think we're all looking forward to when this project gets completed and, and, and up and running. But, um, you know, it's not like there's a tremendous pushback on the signs. I, I guess I'm looking at the site plan and I just wanted to double check to make sure that the signs, uh, Mr. Strubis said that there's one on Taylor and then one on Shawano. Um, I guess I'm looking at the scale of the site plan and proposed monument. Okay, I see it. It's kind of on the curve uh, on, on Taylor. Is that correct? There's one that'll be just through the roundabout going north. Is that correct? Yep, that's, I think Paul's highlighting it there. Yeah, I, I need to, well, I'm looking at, I'm trying to, I've got like two different maps here. Um, I don't know, I don't know if, if I can Mark, see. The, um, I I Go ahead. I could just add to that. Um, you know, there's there's that existing berm kind of built up with the with the chips and plantings all along Taylor. Um, right. That, that was a component of our submittal that um, the stormwater folks wanted to make sure that that very much stayed in place. So. Okay. The, the one gap kind of facing the roundabout is about where we parked that roundabout or parked that monument sign in the first place. So right. the, the contours on the site come up four or five feet, um, just sort of out of the frame of that monument sign location as it's right. Prepared. So the berm itself, how high is the berm at that point? I mean, it's a little farther north of that, right? Yeah, um, I wanna say three or four feet. I'm digging into my plan here. So you, you won't get the full effect of nine feet of sign. It'll be more like five or six feet maybe at the most. Yeah, so the 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 berm up along Taylor comes up to uh like about one thirty five and a half where the where the sign base would touch the grade is right at one thirty three. So we're we're a foot and a half 
two and a half feet down from the top of the berm and its plantings. Um, you know, like, like I said, keep keeping that sign portion of that monument up as high as possible is, is certainly something Purvea Health has some interest in as it relates to the speed of traffic and the scale of the building. So right. um, I suspect without the masonry base, we'd, we'd probably need to pursue a bit more of a traditional permit that, that allowed for uh, building a berm underneath the sign and, and keeping that elevation up where it's at. So Okay. Um, well, I'm going to be asking you a few questions, but I can ask Paul as well, Neumeyer. Um, Paul, I know there's a number of medical facilities and such along on Shano uh, going east and the signage along that route. Uh, is there, you know, granted, it's supposed to be like a six foot requirement, but it sounds like there's other signs that are, are bigger or larger, taller, whatever you want to say. So I, I'm just looking at, from your estimation, looking at this project, if you feel that the signs uh, conform partially to the site plan, but also to the, to the code itself. Well, I think, you know, this is a different situation in the sense this is an, an entire hospital corridor and we do have other signage requirements uh, for St. Mary's and their signs are much larger. So I would think what's being proposed here at nine feet is, is rather small and very close to meeting the code. You know, they could also consider a pole sign in a commercial district up around 30 feet. I don't know that that would be keeping with the, the building or the site. So I think, you know, this is a, somewhat of a reasonable alternative and probably more tasteful and probably blends better with the entire campus and, and the signage uh, you'd find out there. Okay. Um, and then the second sign, I'm just looking for where it's marked. Oh, okay. I think I see it. All right. Like I said, there, you know, that's, um, You've got the parking lot there and such. That's not going to be an issue. I think the sign over on Taylor is far enough back, it looks to me. Um, but those are the only two items that are really being looked at at this time. Correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, um, let me ask Steve, is this, uh, when are we projected to be finished with the project? Any idea? Um, I believe they start seeing patients um, early next summer, late next spring. So they're sure. racing to be enclosed by this winter, um, starting to stud out right now. Um, Mark, if you were over in that neighborhood, it's it's yep. pretty well taken shape. If if you've been right, I, I go by there. I live nearby, so I, I know I know the area quite well. Yeah. So, so they're, they're they're racing to have it closed up by winter and then they'll finish the interior build out and start seeing patients by late spring early summer okay now I, all right and i know we're just talking about the signs right now so I, I can't get off the topic too much here um so like i said it, I'm, it's going to be a great project i'm not denying that whatsoever just more or less uh you know listening to the citizens and, and their concerns and i i think for the most part you know the developers have done a, a pretty decent job of of speaking with the citizens and that and they're, they're not completely happy but i think anytime you have a commercial entity of sorts uh tie in with a neighborhood you're always going to have some some things that aren't perfect but uh i think for the most part you you folks have done a nice very nice job i personally don't have any big issues with it whatsoever i just um, just letting you know that, you know, the citizens are watching and I think uh, you have an opportunity to, to put out a first class project and be a good neighbor. So, Thanks, Mark. So I, I think that's all I have right now. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boyer. Okay. Thank I'll, you. I'll, just, I'll just give a couple of comments here um, before I turn it over. Number one, I think the signage asked, being asked for, as Paul kind of alluded, is almost modest. Uh, for a building and structure and proposal of size. And number two, I will point out for the uh, benefit of the board members that are uh, watching, this uh, applicant did a good job at maintaining and promoting the notion of the interior landscaping that so many times we seem to have a problem with. So kudos to them, it looks like. Like, uh, looks like that, that part of it is something we don't need to address uh, at this point. 
I'll turn it over to Jim or Greg if you have any questions. Do you have any questions for the applicant? Um, could I see the other drawing so we can about uh, in plan view where the property is with regard to the turnabout? I thought I saw like the circle. There we go. And where are we? The building is up in this area approximately with okay. the sign being maybe here and then I think down by this existing drive. Possibly. Okay. So, you know, we've all been, I think, through that intersection. And to me, the size of the sign doesn't seem out of whack with someone trying to see where they're going, coming through this intersection and then being able to see it. So I think from a standpoint of being serviceable, I don't think that size isn't out of whack, I don't believe. Oh, Alderman Stoyer, just yes. a question for you on the, um, the mm -hmm. citizens, if I was reading between the lines there, they're not necessarily too concerned about the, um, the signs itself, is that what I'm saying? Well, uh, yeah, there were there was some uh, one of the citizens called and said that they have an understanding of what's going on. It's nothing unusual. You know, they they don't feel like they're being blindsided at all on this. Okay. You know, like I said, I think the developers have done a good job of at least trying to keep the neighbors in the loop about it. Um, so I haven't had heard a lot of grousing that way from the neighborhood, but. I think there's always concern, you know, I mean, they worry about their property values like anything else and uh, whether or not, you know, one, a couple of people want to sell and it's just the nature of the beast, I guess. But, um, you know, you know, I'm looking at this development and I see, you know, quite a few parking spaces and I, I look at this as a clinic, not a full blown hospital. So you will have, you know, you'll have access coming in off of fellows and you'll have it coming in off of Shano. So you won't have any access on the Gary Lane, which is important. You'll have the berm set up that'll kind of block it pretty well, at least you know some of it. But you know you you'll you will be able to see you know a four and a half five story building. Um, so for the most part on this particular issue, I didn't have a whole lot of pushback on it. They did see you know I think they were all notified, and I th I believe that they had a chance to look it over, and nobody else has really called. So, like I said, if there was a big pushback, then I, I think I'd be talking with, about this a little bit differently. But for the most part, I, it seems like a, a good project, and you do need signage, especially with that roundabout there. I mean, it's a, a very busy intersection. You have a lot of traffic coming in from the gas, two of the gas stations there, and uh, with the hospital coming in and Fleet Farm, you know, you got you're going to have some strain there. But you know, for the most part. The signage will be if you're coming from on Shawano from from east to west, you'll see the sign on Shawano. You know the sign to me that's on Taylor just around the roundabout is far enough south away from the from the homes and the traffic that's south on Taylor on North Taylor will be able to see that sign before negotiating the roundabout. So I think. I think in that terms, I think it's it's good because otherwise, if it, if you couldn't see it, then it, there's no point having a sign there. Once you pass that roundabout and start going north on Taylor, there's no way to get in unless you go up to Gary Lane and then loop around the fellows and come back through the back door area, kind of. So you got two entrances. You got one sign that's well placed in Shawano, and my feeling is that the second sign is is well placed as well. Thank you. Does that help? Yes, it does. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Greg. Do we need a motion? Is there a motion in order? Yeah. I'll make a, a motion to approve the requested variance. Second. Very good. I'll third it. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 You have your variance, 3-0. Thank you, gentlemen. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, item number two. I can't get to my 
can't get to my agenda. So I apologize. Um, it's due to my incompetence apparently in trying to figure this out. Anyway, let's go on to item number two. Thank you. Let's go on to item number two. Um, that would be the the, the uh, Shell station, and I know that that applicant is online. So uh, before we get to him, Paul, you want to go through with what we have to see tonight? Sure. Uh, this is a property at 1828 South Ashland. Uh, it's bound by three streets. It's uh, Lombardi on the south, uh, South Ashland on the east, and then Norwood um, on the west side here. So this is the dyno stop. Uh, this is a gas station convenience store. Uh, we went through a recent rezoning for this property to, uh, to clean up the zoning. We went to, to a highway commercial zoning. And the result was uh, the, the applicant would like to add a drive-through uh, store on the west side of the property. Um, this is an image of the uh, west side looking from Norwood You'd like to have a drive-through come through on this west side of the property. Um, and the problem with that is that there is a 15-foot uh, building and parking setback that's measured off the right-of-way line. So there's about 25 feet or so, I believe. Um, this is the site plan that was submitted. About 25 feet the right-of-way and the building, uh, adding maybe a 10 or 11-foot drive um, and some landscaping, you know, it's going to probably reduce that setback to something less than 15 feet. So the only variance here is to reduce that side yard setback from 15 to something a little bit less. So I think the applicant will just have to clarify what some of those dimensions are, but uh, that's the only variance being considered tonight. All right. I don't believe we have an alderman on for this one, or am I wrong? All right, we'll go to the applicant. Uh, Tony, did, are you the one that we want to listen to? Yes, thank you. Very good. You can well, explain you what you're doing here and, and why the variance uh, is required and why you need to do what you're proposing that needs a variance in the first place. Well, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just recently, like Mr. Newmeyer explained, we were, uh, we did bring the zoning to a commercial, which is a C2 zoning. Uh, and what we are looking to do here is in an effort to stay competitive and to, uh, to beautify the corner, uh, beautify my building, uh, we are, uh, need to change our business and uh, really offer things that are more uh, competitive and allow us to be sustainable. So. In an effort to do that, we have the opportunity to put in a Little Caesars restaurant. They're very excited about the opportunity to be uh, in Green Bay on that corner. I am the franchisee of the uh, restaurant. I'm also the owner and operator of the convenience store and have operated it uh, since the 90s. And in this day and age, uh, it, the uh, restaurants like this, it's very important for the success of the restaurant uh, to have a drive through and this was before uh, this most recent pandemic, and now it is even more. Um, it's just so it's uh, it's so important to the business and the viability of the business in order to have a have a drive through. So we are uh, we are hoping to have that drive through in order for this to work, and uh, that would be along, like Mr. Newmeyer said, along that west side of the building, and. Um, we have, I have uh, talked to uh, the neighbors um, along that area. I've been through two planning commissions in this regard and uh, been very favorable in those planning commissions. We had some good dialogue. Been a good neighbor, I wanna continue to be, had good relationships with those and um, have had very favorable comments from the neighbor and also from our older person, Johnson. And uh, so we are just looking to reduce that setback uh, to uh, allow for us to put in the, um, the driveway. Uh, we're not gonna be building in that setback area, but uh, just to allow for the driveway along that west side. We uh, did in one of our planning commissions, uh, reduce the, uh, the setback uh, to 10 feet. And, um, but then it was, uh, there was something with the zoning that wasn't appropriate. So we had to kind of go back through planning 
uh, and go back through this route here. Uh, so that is our request that the, the business, uh, Little Caesars, uh, they just aren't interested in the new development uh, here at this location unless there is a drive-through that is going to be over 60% of the sales projected <clears throat> based off of their other locations throughout the country. So that's, uh, it's new to me, uh, but you know, as a franchisee, I, you know, uh, I do recognize the importance of the drive-through and uh, without it, it will, uh, it, the project just doesn't work. Uh, so we want to continue to obviously be a good partner in the neighborhood. We've been there for a long time. We'll continue to do so, continue to have good relationships. And uh, that's uh, the hardship is obviously just being able to, to do the restaurant to stay competitive as a business uh, against the national chains uh, and offering ready to eat food and uh, prepared food and those sorts of things. So that's the hardship, uh, really just looking to, like I say, just have a little flexibility with the uh, setback and uh, allow for us to, to have a sustainable business. And of course, beautify that side, that Western side of the building uh, will be completely remodeled, which was we found to be uh, favorable with the neighbors as well as the back of the building. And uh, we also through planning, uh, there is a driveway in the Northwest corner of the property. And uh, through the planning commission, I agreed, uh, we thought it would be a good to have that be entrance only off of Norwood, which would no longer allow for folks to exit out of that driveway. So we'll continue, to, we will certainly do that as well. So I'm available with any questions. Okay, I have I have no questions regarding this. I'll turn it over to uh, Jim and Greg. Okay, so to be clear, the the existing required setback is 19 feet, and you want to reduce that to 10. It would be 15 feet under code. So 15 feet is existing code. Right. We want to reduce it from 15 to 10 feet. That's correct. Okay. Um, is the existing subway going to still uh, operate? They are not. Okay, so it'll be a pizza place. Correct. It'll okay. be a Little Caesars, uh, traditional Little Caesars location. And so the traffic flow will be from north to south, and then they'll have to turn and get on, turn right. Yeah. Okay. To get up to Norwood, correct, to the okay. intersection. Um, you already have entrances and uh, exits coming off of Norwood, right, Tony? Yes, that's correct. We have three. There's okay. two yeah. on the south side, and then there's one on that far north northwest yeah. side. Okay. And and cars can get you know if someone's not through the drive-through, is there a plan for cars to go around if they wanted to exit? outside of you know how they do that at a lot of um, fast food places a car could go around oh like uh if you're in a drive through where you could escape it yeah and go around right. there isn't the room unfortunately okay. yeah here for that okay is there going to be indoor eating also <clears throat> are people going to be parking and walking in in the back so the lobby is very, very small. There is no, there is not tables. There will not be tables. Okay. So it's very much a it's a takeout um, operation. Okay. So okay. There won't be much parking, and if you know there is some, there's certain there is some at our convenience store too. But it's with you know it's minutes because there's an hour. There's apps that you order and 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 it's ready and right. you come in and grab it and leave. And oftentimes you even pay for it on your phone. So it's a quick transaction. Okay, and I would assume the gas course, the gas station is still going to be there. Yes, that's correct. Okay. The okay. convenience store, we've been, yes, we'll continue we'll be to be there. As, as okay. Normal. It'll just be different that we're also now operating this restaurant as opposed to before it was a tenant of ours. So okay. now we'll be oh, running, okay. both, which is essentially two separate businesses, but right. we're you know operating both of them. So. Okay. What do you think, gentlemen? I, I'm, my personal opinion. I think it's, I think it's fine. Um, and um, 
you know, just based on the setup of this neighborhood, it's already got three um, exits there. Um, looks like they've done their homework. He's not a, asking for an unreasonable amount of, you know, space and to make it work, uh, there's no real other option on this property to get it to happen. So um, I would vote in favor of it. All right. Jim, your thoughts? Um, it is kind of a, it is kind of a, an ask for, uh, but looking, knowing having been on the site um, and knowing that it's busy and it's not really changing things necessarily other than kind of making a one direction flow um, past the building. So um, I would assume that the trees are gonna have to go, um, but I don't see the use and the dimensions being that off kilter of what's already existing there. So I wouldn't have a problem voting for it. Okay. Yeah, yes, neither would I. This, the, the encroachment of an extra five feet seems reasonable in this case. Um, so I would have no objection. Before we, before we go too much further, is there anyone else online right now that wishes to speak for or against this project? All right, I think a, a motion would be in order. I'll make a, a motion, approve the requested variance for, uh, from 15 to 10 feet on the setback. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. You have your variance, 3 0. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, now we can move on to item number three. As I recall, this involves a fence. And Paul, maybe you can explain uh, the situation before us and then we can get to the applicant. Sure, uh, will do. This is a property at 1000 Bond Street. Uh, this is the property here at uh, the northwest corner of Northern and Bond, a single family home here. I think the idea is to fence in this portion of the corner side yard. Uh, so I guess technically this is the front yard corner side yard here and the proposal is to bring that fencing basically the side yard being fenced in um, again you can kind of see bond and norwood on this side here um, the home and the garage and then this fencing the issue is the height of the fence and location um, so this is considered the front yard setback here um, no fence I guess a, a six foot fence can go up to that setback line. Once you pass into the setback, that has to then drop to a three foot solid, a four foot 50% open or a five foot 80% open. So I believe if I understand correctly, the applicant can, can explain further, because I think he wants to bring that fence, that six foot fence all the way out to the um, right of way line, which is, a, is, is not permitted under the code. But he can have the six feet behind the, the right of way line, is that right? Right, I, I guess kind of an imaginary, you know, wherever that setback line is, I don't know if that's actually been determined, but pretty much where the front of the house is, is where okay. the max I got it, yep. yep. Okay, uh, Mr. Papa Petru, do you care to talk to us? Yes, sir. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. All right, um, so like stated, we wanna uh, put up a six foot privacy fence around our, um, our side yard that comes up, uh, up to the front setback. Um, due to the location and like the uniqueness of our property, we don't really have a, a backyard at all to enjoy our yard. And um, we have a, a German shepherd that needs to be able to run around, so. A six foot height is definitely needed. Uh, he can clear some other lower fences. So um, we, we would like it to be uh, completely uh, private because 
Um, we, we don't need them barking at anyone. Our, all our neighbors around us also have dogs and chain link fences, and they're all barking at each other and running back and forth the entire time. So just for the, <clears throat> the peace of the neighborhood, we'd like to, to make that as hard as possible for him to see anything. Okay, so I have a question and it, for you and Paul at the same time. Let's let's let me address this to the applicant. If if you were only allowed to go six feet up to the house and not all the way to um, the sidewalk, is that sufficient? Is there a overwhelming reason why that would be insufficient? Um, that's like half of the entire yard, so it would cut our, cut our space in half at that point. And uh, the the major reason for having the fence in the yard is to be able to give the dog as much exercise as possible. Okay. Paul, I'll, I'll ask you the same question. Could the applicant without a variance go straight across to, let's say at the front of the house with the six feet? That, that could be done, that could be a permit that could be issued, yes. Okay, so he wouldn't need a variance for that. So the, to the extent that he moves forward from with the fence at six feet from the front of the house, he's needing a variance. That's the challenge. It's not so much not allowing the fence, it's just the height of the fence right. when it encroaches into that setback area. So once he goes, once he goes past the front of the house, he's into the three- Thank you very much. Zone. He's into the front yard then. The other thing I want to point out too is in proximity to the uh, driveway and the street and the sidewalk, um, you know, bringing a six foot fence out creates a vision issue or a hazard, so to speak, um, for pedestrians or someone backing out of that driveway. So that kind of creates a barrier uh, for visibility on that particular location. Okay. Greg and uh, Jim, do you have any questions? No. Um, yeah, I guess to follow up on that safety question, I so, as we look at this picture, we come all the way from the driveway up to the sidewalk, just on the other side of the garbage can, and then go left all the way along the sidewalk with a six foot fence. And I guess there's two issues I see there. One is the safety issue of a car backing up, um, people on the sidewalk, that kind of thing. And I know the people in the house, of course, would be very, you know, try to be safe, but there would be a visual barrier there created by that fence if it's put up that way. Um, and the other thing is it will stick out, I believe, just looking at it, if you look down the street, that fence is gonna really stick out, like um, there's a big fence there, right up to the sidewalk. I don't think, I don't know if I've seen that anywhere in the city, <clears throat> I mean, I've seen fences of all different shapes, colors, sizes, uh, but I just can't recall where there's a fence running along the sidewalk right next to a driveway that's six foot high. Maybe I, I could be wrong, but it, to me, it, it's asking a lot in terms of safety to, to approve the variance as requested. So we have noticed in in the area, it seems that there is a I don't know the proper word, not really loophole, but uh, there are houses with a similar lot layout to ours, with the only difference being that their front door is um, facing the other street. Uh, you know, being on a on a corner lot like we are, um, and we've noticed and we've done a little bit of research that that is a um, a difference where. With just that one small distinction, your front door being on one side of the house versus the other, it it, it changes the the yard being from the front a side yard to a 
a backyard. And so they do actually have fences right up along the sidewalk and right up to the driveway. Same as kind of what we're looking at doing, which is kind of where we got the idea just because we have seen multiple people in the area with that layout. Um, and then I guess my other question would be too, um, like, like Benjamin had said with the, with the line where it is, where we could have the six foot fence, where if it stops halfway in the yard, lining up with the house, uh, I'm not sure if there could be any kind of leeway where we could uh, work out if, if you couldn't approve a variance up to the sidewalk, if you could possibly approve something in between that space at all. Um, I guess I just kind of to see what the different options are and what something you guys think would work for that situation then. Could you please state your name and address? I'm sorry. Oh, sure. I'm sorry. My name is Allison Woodruff. I am uh, Benjamin's fiance. I live in the home with him. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, I don't know what your thoughts are on this. I, I would just as soon uh, deny the variance outright. I, I don't care to get into designing alternatives. I think the ask here is more than we can allow. And I think the, in this case, the uh, fence ordinance uh, applies just fine. I see no variance required. Yeah, I, I agree, Don. I think that, um, you know, there's a, with the claim of hardship for the dog and so forth, and, you know, the ability that, I mean, it might not be to the, the, the desire of the size of their yard to continue with a fence, but it still accomplishes for the most part, what they're trying to do, by, and, and it's not needing a variance. And all those other safety concerns to me just totally outweigh any of those um, reasons that the applicant stated to uh, for the request of a variance. Uh, and I, I would agree that I haven't seen any fences like that. I walk my neighborhood uh, every day. I've never seen a fence that's gone up to the sidewalk. So, um, for those reasons, I think it's pretty clear this should be denied. Um, I have a question for Paul. If this was a backyard, would a fence be allowed to go up to the sidewalk? We always have to be mindful of the setbacks. So when we start encroaching on a front yard or corner side yard, um, that kind of triggers that drop down from six to something less than that. So. Um, yeah, in a typical backyard, sure, you could have a six foot high fence, you know, on the lot line basically. But when you hit that front and corner side yard, it, it has to start dropping for, for aesthetic reasons and also for safety reasons. So you're saying technically a six foot fence wouldn't be allowed to go to the walk. I mean, I'm just reacting to, a, you know, the facts that there may be some existing in this neighborhood. and. I just want to double check. So you you would have to drop the height of the fence down, even in the backyard. Right. So I can just briefly. I mean, this is the front of the house, right? So this is the front door. This is one thousand bond. Right. This is the front yard. We'd consider this the corner side yard. They really have no rear yard. It's it's very tight, if anything. Here, they have an interior side yard, which acts like their backyard, I guess. Um, which you know can be. Fence, so you could fence from here to here to somewhere in here and back to the house with right. a six foot fence. The I challenge is when you start getting past that line, then you know, there's safety issues, there's aesthetic issues, and you know, as well, far as other fences in the neighborhood, um, you know, some are maybe installed without permits, some might be illegal, okay. and I'd like to know about those. Um, maybe okay. some they get a variance. I, I, I wouldn't know without knowing the addresses, I guess. Okay, I, well, I just wanted to follow up um, on that so it wouldn't make a difference if the door on this house was on the other street no I you know I think those are interpretations we make as staff and I think that's we've been pretty consistent about uh, okay you know, determining I just want to make sure because I'd almost be willing to go halfway if that were the case but if you're telling me technically you wouldn't want it up against the sidewalk okay I understand that and also want to clarify 
clarify, you know, the the safety issue is the vision triangle, and that's defined in the zoning code. And when you ever, whenever you approach a drive or an alley, there's a 15 foot vision triangle that has to be maintained. Mm -hmm. Very difficult to apply that here just because of the sheer size of the lot, but going 15 feet this way, 15 feet this way, creates that vision triangle. Yeah. Um, you, know, you could consider moving the fence closer, but you're still gonna be in that 15 foot range. Yeah. Possibly. Okay, gotcha. Jim, you comfortable with me making a motion? Hmm, I'm literally on the fence on this one. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'll make a motion to deny the variance. I'll second it. Okay, okay we have a, we had and seconded to deny the variance for the 1000 Bond Street property as it has been requested to us tonight. All in favor? Aye. 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 Three zero, no variance. All right, folks, where do we go from here? Is there anything further to discuss? I have nothing else to offer. All right. Then I guess we can, uh, with the appropriate motion, we can adjourn. Well, we got to, don't we have to close the. All right, go ahead. Well, you move to close the floor. floor I'll we have second. a motion made and seconded to close the floor. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we're done. Now we need a motion to adjourn. I'll so move. Okay, second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. three zero. We're done, guys. Thank you. Okay, okay thank, thank you. you.